Chris Johnson wearing camouflage and weighing in officially at 10 stones, six pounds. His professional record, 29 victories, including 14 big wins by knockout, three defeats, two draws by way of Bogota, Colombia. Now living training and fighting out Toronto, Canada, the two-time NABA welterweight champion, Samuel Vargas! And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner with his trainer, Joe Goosen, wearing white with black. He officially weighed in at 10 stone, seven pounds. This Olympic silver medalist now has a professional record of 32 victories. 20 knockouts, four defeats. He's the fighting pride of Bolton, England, the former light welterweight champion of the world, Amir King Power! I spoke to you in the changing room, you know what I expect. Shake hands, best of luck to both. Here we go. 31 now, the former Olympic silver medalist, world champion, world challenger, celebrity, family man, an all-round sporting attraction. That's Amir Khan. It was blink and you did miss it in that 39-second blitz of Phil Le Greco in Liverpool. What will this passionate Birmingham crowd see as Khan tackles the younger and possibly fresher Samuel Vargas. He himself predicts a knockout upset win. Khan closing in on a super fight with Kel Brook, who's got prime position at ringside tonight. And maybe Manny Pacquiao also been mentioned. This the second fight since Canelo Alvarez blew him away. Such a hard defeat to come back from. And what we did learn in Liverpool is that the speed, Carl, is very much still there. Yeah, that's evident straight away here against Vargas. The jab landing pretty much straight away, the jab right hand. And um, I think Vargas realising he's going to have to move his head and get his defence nice and tight early on here with Amir Khan. Vargas brings 29 victories in his 34 fights into the ring. But those two escapades up to the echelons of the division and the losses to... Both Errol Spence and Danny Garcia checked him. And Khan should be in that sort of class still, even at this stage of his career. Vargas will be coming here, though, motivated. He knows who's in against. He's had 10 weeks' notice for this. Apparently, he's had a great camp, brought on a nutritionist. So, however, or whatever you think about Vargas, this will probably be the best of him. So, Amir Khan needs to concentrate. Yep, Khan, who suffered early defeats himself. Bredis Prescott was the most dramatic, but a nice right hand there inside this opener. Already at least Vargas getting a foothold into proceedings, which uh, Phil Le Greco never managed. Yeah, Vargas has got a bit of an awkward defence. He sort of ducks low to his right behind that shoulder. It's always difficult to tag an opponent when they lean away with that shoulder and duck down quite low but Khan he's seen these styles before and he's getting through nicely with this jab and boxing well behind that jab got backed up there and caught with a left hook Vargas showing him that he means business a right hand though from Khan there's the reply and he shakes his head Vargas not only has he got to deal with the power he's got to deal with the blistering hands of Khan but as we've seen so many times there is a vulnerability a fascination really over the Khan whiskers, the Khan defense. And when the red mist comes down, he loves the tear up. And that's what Vargas will be hoping for, just to catch him cleanly once. But easier said than done, Carl. Well, Vargas has only got 14 knockouts coming out of his 29 wins. So, you know, getting on for a 50% knockout ratio means he can punch, but he's not known for being a concussive puncher. So Khan shouldn't be too worried about getting hit. Flush, obviously you don't want to get hit, but he'll be coming into it this fight tonight not too concerned about the punching power of Vargas Vargas obviously means business and he's looking well 
Much behind the jab and a patient start from Khan. Boxing on Sky Sports. Many people want to see fight Amir Khan next. Kelbrook, it's been Second talked down. about for years. Run. It will still be a super fight, both under the matchroom umbrella. Both really need it. Khan, first of all, has to deal with Samuel Vargas. The white and black shorts of Khan and the camouflage of the Canadian. And here comes Amir Khan with a burst. And down goes Vargas inside the only 20 seconds of the second round. And it's this hand speed again that Phil the Greco couldn't deal with and now it looks like Samuel Vargas has all sorts of problems with jab, right hands, combinations and Khan looking razor sharp again well if you switch off in front of Amir Khan that blistering hand speed will catch you off guard and um, Vargas really taking his time too much and not seeming too concerned about sitting in front of Khan but that's dangerous almost like a thumb in the eye there the right eye of Khan from Vargas back to his Boxing, the electricity that he brings into the ring, Khan, which still makes him compelling viewing. That's nice a, uppercut. Yeah, it's that injection of pace and pressure from Amir Khan, and, you know, the, the quality of punches and combination punches so fast. Vargas trying to meet fire with fire and turn it into a slugfest. Yeah, it's nice to see Vargas not shine away. Not too concerned about the knockdown, seems to be okay here on his feet, but Amir Khan enjoying himself in there. Good body shot went in. Vargas tries the uppercut, he just wants to land something, he says, that will clip the temple of Khan. Make him do one of those dances that he's seen over the years, but Khan so often finds a way. Well, if Amir Khan catches his opponents early, we've seen it time and time again, he tries to overwhelm them with volume of punches and the accuracy and the speed usually gets the job done Vargas will be trying to get Khan past five rounds here at least this time mixing up the bursts of energy with some more patient boxing I know trainer Joe Goosen would like Khan to go some rounds tonight maybe to prepare him for that super fight with Brooke or Pacquiao as blood comes from the nose of Vargas well, I think Amir Khan's got another thing on his mind. He's just looking at sending out a statement. And he's certainly doing that so far. He's looking, looking sharp and strong. Vargas still in front of him, though, backing him up, but bleeding heavily from the nose. Just out of range there, Khan. Vargas tries to work the body. Defense tight from Khan downstairs. I don't like to see opponents and fighters looking at the referee and speaking too much like Amir Khan is there. I mean, he's pushing down Vargas. Oh, yeah, right right from Vargas! And down goes Khan! And there is the problem for the British fight fans and for Amir Khan. That chin, that vulnerability, that drama, it's happened again. Oh, my! Well, we've seen it before, Adam, and we've seen it there now. That was a heavy, heavy-looking right hand saved there by the bell. I mean, he needed the bell there desperately, and he got it. So he's going to be hopeful that he can recover in this one minute. But when you get clipped so hard, it's very difficult to make a full recovery so quick. You were too calm in front of him instead of being on guard. He's still dangerous. So Khan gets the knockdown early in the second round. It seems to be all going his way, nice and controlled, and boom! Stopped by Brady's Prescott. Dismantled by Danny Garcia after that really good start. Flattened by Canelo Alvarez. And now Amir Khan, well, he's talking to Sammy Vargas in there. And we know, and he admits himself, Carl, that he loves a scrap, that when he gets hurt, he wants to engage. That's right, I mean, and that's been a problem in the past with the knockout defeats that he's suffered. He's, um, he's let his heart rule his head. He knows he should box and move and keep out of the way, but then he gets involved, and um, that chin that, you know, we've seen it, he's been tested and failed the test a couple of times, two or three times throughout his career, and we've seen that there.
Vargas landing flush with that right hand. Amir Khan has to be careful because Vargas will have one thing on his mind now. He'll be looking at timing a right hand as Khan backs him up. And what on earth was going through Kel Brook's mind in the front row of ringside? Was it the big fight up in smoke or was it, wow, I'm definitely going to beat him now? As he says, he's going to possibly come down to welterweight for the fight. But that's still a way off. There is business to take care of here. Samuel Vargas promised he'd come looking for the upset, looking for the dramatic knockout to propel himself onto the very exciting world welterweight stage for the right hand. And down goes Vargas. He says it was the back of the head. Terry O'Connor counts it. And it's the third count within, what, three or four minutes and another dramatic Khan affair. Well, the shot was on the back of the head, but he still went down and he still looked hurt, which is good news for Amir Khan. Body shot from Vargas, two to one in knockdowns in favour of Khan, but the most dramatic was when he was on the seat of his pants. Vargas will be hoping to unearth another. Fascinating stuff. Vargas doesn't seem too bothered by that last knockdown. Seems to have recovered nicely. Still backing Amir Khan up. Khan sort of waiting to box and move as Vargas comes forward. Khan will be looking at trying to time him with a big right hand and a combination. But Vargas seems to be ready for him. He's trying to keep himself together, isn't he? Remains solid, Vargas. He knows he's not got the skill set to deal with Khan maybe this early in the fight, but if he could just stick in there. Well, his leg looks solid enough as he backs Khan up here. He doesn't seem too, too dazed. I know he went down with that shot, but he did complain immediately about the back of the head. Maybe he tried to make a bit of a meal of it, and he wasn't as hurt as he looked. Good accuracy there from Khan, who's got himself back together, recovered well from the knockdown you're back you're back okay. so just remember when he starts speaking when he's on your left hand side here he's looking for that right hand be aware of that right there okay here's the thing steal steal a little body on steal a little body on no They are just must-see fights, aren't they? Anything that Amir Khan's involved in, in a ring. Well, this is what we've been talking about all week. I mean, when Amir Khan's fighting, you, you kind of have to tune in because it can go either way. And un unfortunately for Amir, when he gets hit on the chin, you know, he does go over. Um, but he's full of self-belief and confidence, and he's, he's got bags of ability. He's very talented. I mean, Vargas there complained about a shot at the back of the head, so I'm not sure how bad that affected him. He went over, but I think he's recovered well enough. This fight really... Is there potentially for anybody to win into the fourth round and Samuel Vargas very quick up off his stool Chris Johnson his trainer having a real war of words with uh, Joe Goosen who now looks after Amir Khan the veteran from California saying mentally how do you bring a fighter back after what happened with Canelo Alvarez Khan with a body shot complaining it's too low Vargas but if he can uh, keep the speed going, that's going to give the Canadian real problems. Yeah, that looked like good work from me, from Amir Khan. Nice combination and switching to the body. I mean, may have been borderline, but good work from Khan. Fast hands, accurate head and body work. Vargas looking to back him up here. Khan come back from uh, dramas. He was down against Julio Diaz. He also had... A uh, real problem at times against Marcus Maidana in the Mandalay Bay in that cracking fight. But he got through it. Nothing wrong with his heart and guts, Khan. Or chin in that fight. I mean, he took shots I didn't think he could take against Marcus Maidana. It was amazing. So what is it? A defensive fragility more than a chin problem? I don't know. I think he was numb to the shots that evening at them because he just didn't seem to want to go over and he was getting hit with everything. Vargas knows, though. He can really hurt Khan. Vargas is looking now to just time Amir Khan. He's trying to trigger Khan and wait for something to come. He'll be looking for that right hand over the top if Khan switches off. But Khan knows the game well. He's been around long enough to know he can't switch off. Stay concentrated, focus, 
move away from that right hand to his right, which is doing nicely here. Still a long way to go here, and fast hands of Khan will yep. take these rounds. They will, but Vargas has had the activity that Khan hasn't. That's why Team Khan need the rounds to prepare for what's next. But a right hand again from Vargas. Khan's chin up in the air, and he is going to meet fire with his own fire. This is why he excites Carl. Really good right hand from Vargas there, landing flush. Fahmi Khan just fired back, answered with a combination of his own, but he's looking quite open to that overhand right of Vargas, who's finding a place now for the right hand far too often. Two good shots there in the last couple of combinations he's thrown. Khan calling him on, a bit bravado there. He needs to be careful, Amir Khan, because we've seen what happens when that right hand lands. Trying to poke out the jab there. Vargas Khan in and out quickly, utilizing the ropes. Yeah, nice work on his back foot there, Amir Khan. As he backed up to the ropes, little combination. He met Vargas as he came in and then spun off to the side. Quality work there from, from Amir Khan. Yep, can look brilliant when he's bamboozling his opponents. Khan. Vargas trying to edge closer. Boxing on Sky Sports. Sponsor. Don't keep on keep banging them up. Using that jab. Ten seconds. Well, there's the right hand as early as round two. Wide open it. I mean, for him with the jab there, Amir Khan. And Vargas was able to just hit him freely. Khan wasn't quite asleep before he hit the ground, which you see sometimes with a heavy blow. So that's good signs that he wasn't totally out before he hit the ground. But Kelbrook must be licking his lips. I'm not sure he would have let Amir Khan off the hook if he'd had him in that trouble but that's still a fictitious fight until it's made Khan into the fifth round second fight in the comeback since the obliteration by Canelo Alvarez when he took the big leap up to middleweight and Vargas full of energy still full of belief he's come a long way they've worked very hard Well, when you knock your opponent down and you know you can hurt them, it does feel you're full of belief. You know that if you land that shot, you're going to get that effect that you're looking for. Body shots are good, though, from Khan. Up to the head. Look at this combination. Vargas-Khan deal. When he accelerates like that, Khan. Well, this is what Khan's got, that speed and accuracy. Oh, big right hand. He's in trouble on the ropes here, Vargas. It's non-stop punishment. There's a cut to his nose. Terry O'Connor tries to pull them apart. And there's plenty of time left in the fifth here for Khan to get the job done. Whirlwind attack there from Amir Khan, landing with a lot of accurate blows, and the face of Vargas tells a story from that one combination alone. Badly caught on the bridge of the nose. Vargas digging in, launching in his own body shots. Great action fight here in Birmingham. Huge spirit from Vargas, trying to stick in there with Khan, hoping to launch another big one, but Khan's all over him again. Well, that's what Khan does so well. He's able to just overwhelm his opponent with fast, accurate combinations, and he just turns the fight on his head. We've seen it time and time again, when he doesn't get that success. That was low, and he's complaining about that, Vargas. That wasn't good up to the head from Khan. Vargas still fairly strong in the legs. Very tough. He's took a lot of punishment there and he's, he's coming forward, his face telling a story. Can he weather the storm? Well, he seems to be tough enough at this stage. I mean, Amir Khan was trying to force a stop. He's there and get the referee to jump in. Very experienced. Terry O'Connor there. I mean, he wasn't buying it. He needs to see accurate shots land and legs go before he'll jump in and stop anything. Vargas. He's still firing back, he's still looking quite solid on the legs. Amir Khan looking for a bit of a breather here as he just boxes and moves on his back foot with that jab. You have a shift in gears here from Khan. After the volume for most of the round. Big smile from Khan. Fargas still with him. 
Well, there's the fast hands and the blistering speed that we talked about earlier with Amir Khan. When he puts them combinations together, I mean, he's put together a good combo there. Now he goes to work as he backs up Vargas on the ropes. And this is where the damage is done. One, two, three, four, five, six punches unanswered. But, you know, Vargas has got a good defence, but then punches are going through that defence. And damage is still being done. Great work from Khan, but you saw he needed to slow it down and get recovered there after that work. Well, I'm a celebrity. Get you out of here, Jamie Lomas. And, uh, well, alongside Dave Corwell, he's a celebrity in his own right in the boxing world, that's for certain. But uh, very friendly with all of them. Rebecca Vardy and Dennis Wise, and they loved him over there in the jungle. But Amir Khan wants to make a real point in the boxing world now. He believes he can become a world champion again. Interesting to hear Matthew Macklin and Johnny Nelson's debate on JD ringside. I yeah, weren't quite sure whether he could be totally dominant. Do you think he will become a world champion again on this evidence? Well, he's looking good, isn't he? But you have to, you know, be honest and, and realistic about the level of opposition in front of him. Vargas, when he stepped up to a level himself, he's been KO'd and been beaten badly. That was a low blow there from Khan on the blind side of the referee. Vargas making no complaints, but his nose is definitely broken. He's not making a meal of it. He's very tough, Vargas, still coming forward. Extremely gritty, but there are so many. A big level above this. And the likes of Errol Spence and Keith Thurman and Terence Crawford and Sean Porter and Danny Garcia who fight later tonight. Vargas, though, putting everything into this fight. It's a terrific effort. It really is, as he swings from the hip. Yeah, can't, well, can't staying tight, Carl. Yeah, Vargas working the body quite well there, but Amir Khan sitting back quite comfortably behind his defence, shaking his head. Just to indicate to Vargas that them shots aren't bothering him. And here, here comes Amir Khan with them fast hands. Is Vargas thinking, though, these are arm punches from Khan? Maybe slightly less tempo from the Bolton man, and Vargas beginning to hunt him down around the ring. Well, he still seems to be full of belief still coming forward and still very much wanting it in there which is good to see don't forget the lack of rounds that Amir Khan's had in the last three years Vargas has fought regularly and he's really hungry provided Khan comes through this this evening it's a great matchup because it's given him rounds and it's you know, let him realize that this sport is still very difficult. You can't just come back and take over. He's thoroughly expected to beat Vargas. When you listen to him speak on the build-up to this, he said it would be an easy job for him, quite matter of fact about it. And, um, you know, he didn't think he'd be getting caught with a shot and hitting the floor. You could hardly find anybody who gave Samuel Vargas a real chance of winning this fight beforehand. People thought he might go a few rounds but actually win it not really but then not many people thought Tony Belly would do with David Hay not only once but twice that's boxing for you well this is where we wanted to see Amir Khan you know towards the second half of the fight is the first half over Amir Khan slowing down a bit breathing a bit heavily Boxing on Sky Sports. Got attention at the uh, arena in Birmingham. There will be plenty in Paris. Cannot wait for this. The Ryder Cup at the back end of the month. It's going to be fantastic. The week after AJ Povetkin as well. What a sporting September. The second half of this one at welterweight in the 10 stone 7 division. Amir Khan. In now the blood-stained white trunks and a uh, marauding Samuel Vargas who's been on the floor a couple of times but it hasn't dented his spirit one little bit and he has had Khan down dramatically in the second. What happens next? Yeah, Vargas has really given us a good, good performance, really a great performance. He's put Khan down and he's answered everything back. He doesn't look too concerned when he's under attack now from Amir Khan. And he's given us what we wanted to see. 
Seemed like he heard him again there, Fargas, but Khan came straight back, yeah. and that's what he does. As soon as he takes one, he wants to throw straight away. And that's sometimes his undoing, but that's what makes him so exciting. But it's a good attitude. Another right caught hand for again. Vargas. And again, he's getting caught hot far too frequently now, Amir Khan. Vargas, when he feels these shots land, he'll be feeling confident. And Amir Khan's in a, in a place now where he's not been for a long time into round seven. And when you come back after a rest, until you get taken into these kind of territories, you don't know how your body's going to respond. And it wasn't just a rest, he had hand issues as well. This time out of the ring. Yes, he's had great training camps before Le Greco and Vargas, but nothing Carl beats ring time, and Vargas has had that. That's right, he's had ring time, and um, there's no substitute for, for boxing and fighting. I mean, sparring is the closest thing to fighting, but let me tell you, it's nothing like fighting. With them 10-ounce gloves on, Eight ounces in this case, it's just it's just a different different story altogether. Them punches hurt, they cause damage. And Amir Khan now is in like unknown territory that's not been in for a while. It's good to see him in there and see how he copes with it. Vargas smiling. Seems to be still enjoying himself, seems to be soaking up these quality punches from Amir Khan. Well he's showing a great chin, isn't he? Seeing as Errol Spence and Danny Garcia took him out. And at the moment Khan hasn't. Well, yeah, if you're going to do comparisons, then obviously Vargas was taken out, but you know, you're talking about Spence there, Errol Spence and Garcia, quality operators at the top of their game. And he has had a fantastic and long cap for this, Sammy Vargas. He's coming off a draw against Mauro Godoy in Canada. Beat Ali Funica, but not a lot really since that loss to Danny Garcia. If Khan is talking about these big fights, it's... Well, it's still a way off, isn't it, really? Certainly in terms of levels, if he's struggling with Samuel Vargas here. He's winning the rounds, though. He is, but he's on his back foot now. He's slowed down, so... It's good observation, a good point to make, because, you know, at this stage now, you want to see Khan dominating. Let's find out what Kel's thinking. Kel, very popular man in here tonight. Uh, what are you making of this Amir uh, Khan performance so far? Yeah, it's very interesting, this fight, you know... Uh, on the scales the other day, you know, he had to take his pants off. He didn't look in great shape to me, you know, so, you know, he's saying they can make well to it, but it looked like he was struggling to me. Can you make well to it? I can make well to it. I can make well to it. You know, he's trying he's trying to pull everything he can, you know, to for the fight not to happen. But he's embarrassing, his, you know, his family and his friends, man. Everyone wants to see this fight. Everyone wants to see this fight, you know, but this fight is, this fight tonight is a very good fight, you know, with Vargas, very tough. I've seen it, met him in Canada when Billy Joe boxed Lemieux. Very tough, very grounded fight. But Amir Khan's been on the campus as well, so it's an entertaining fight. But does, does Khan win this fight very quickly? You know, I think I think I, can't, I, mean, I think Amir can get through this fight and win this fight. Yeah. Thanks, Kel. It is very interesting as Kel gets booed from the pro Khan crowd here, and uh, we need that to happen. If Khan gets through this, it, it it should happen next, shouldn't it? I think it did. Crying shame if it didn't. It's a big fight that everyone wants to see, and. Um, one thing about Kel Brock, he, he doesn't seem too concerned, he, he seems quite happy. Uh, I'm not sure about getting down to 147, but if he thinks he can then, and maybe he will. And if both of them are struggling, do it at 150. We just want to see that fight. It's been too long in the mix, in the talking. We never got Hatton and Witter in a ring. We never saw Lennox Lewis fight Riddick Bowe. Many fights that fans have wanted have, for whatever reason, not materialised. We want this one. First of all, he's got to get through the last few rounds against a very determined Samuel Vargas, who, whatever happens here on in, has given a great display up off the canvas a couple of times, having his own, uh, well, certainly highlight success with that second round knockdown off Khan. Can he detonate another one? It hasn't looked like it for a while. It's not, he is looking for it, but that sharpness and that speed because, you know, the, the energy's been sat from both these fighters. Here we are in round eight, and, you know, you slow down no matter how fit you are, you do slow down, your feet become a bit flat. Vargas still looking for that overhand right, he nearly landed it on, as Khan backed himself up to the ropes. As soon as Khan gets close to these ropes, he needs to spin off. He knows better than to sit on ropes, but that's when Vargas will detonate that overhand right, and if, if it connects, I'm not sure it's got the full power at this stage of the fight, but... I think Khan still can be hurt.
Well, this is where we wanted to see Amir Khan. I mean, let's be, let's be honest, we didn't want to see a two-round obliteration. We wanted to see what it looked like in round seven and round eight and through into the championship round. So Vargas has given us that, which is great, but it's probably not so great for Team Khan because if they have plans of coming in and whitewashing somebody like Vargas and sending out a statement to the top fighters in this division, then so far that's not happened. Nope, it's been a mixed bag from Khan, who again tries the body shot at times, you think. He's just going to go into overdrive and uh, put one of those 20, 30 fight punch combinations together and look for Terry O'Connor to intervene. But Vargas is maneuvering around the ring quite nicely. Right hand from Khan. Has he taken his best punches, Vargas? And is he now believing that if he gets him into 10, 11, 12, he can beat him up in terms of stamina well he's, he's been hit with Amir Khan's best punches and he's still there so that answers the question can he take it but I think the energy now is is sapping from Vargas and although he's still trying he doesn't pose any serious threat now I think you, I think you can kick him out when you when you turn him like you're and you get him hurt I think you gotta calm down but keep the pressure on him you know you know what I'm saying you, just because he starts when you start moving on him and he starts throwing body shots doesn't mean you have to keep going and the one block the body shots and get your combos back on him Amir every time you, every time you throw a good combo you hurt him okay I need to do a little bit more offense all right this is nine Well, congratulations to Chris Johnson for getting Samuel Vargas back mentally and physically. It's obviously been a relationship that they've needed, the two of them. And they've come over here for the win, for the W. And he's still putting pressure on Khan. I mean, the scorecards will be interesting. Khan's won the majority of these rounds, hasn't he? We've had the knockdowns, and Vargas has surely got to take him out at some point. But, you know, if Khan tires, there's still four left. You know, 12 minutes is a long time in a professional ring when you're tired, but both men are quite tired here. Mick Khan's still going to be looking, as you say, for them. Fast combinations, which I don't think are going to cause Vargas too much trouble now at the late stage of this this contest but still got a third of the fight left and Vargas if he manages to catch Khan clean you just don't know what's going to happen so Khan has to stay switched on you can see his work rates drop massively he's on his back foot and he's not really willing to sit in exchange and throw I mean this is the championship rounds where really you should be stepping it up and taking over well, work there from Khan. that's what Joe Goosen wanted him to do he said you're hurting him I want more offense Khan backpedaling. Has done that at times in his career when he outboxed the likes of Devon Alexander. And got into problems with Lamont Peterson when it was rough and tough. And Vargas is trying to do that here. That's good work from Vargas up close. You know, making Khan's trying to hold and Vargas trying to make him work. Hit him with short uppercuts and took the shoulder in there to break them up. Khan looking to rest. Vargas not allowing that. How much is in the Amir Khan tank in this ninth round? Where the energy levels, he's obviously had a, a super camp. But so too Vargas. And Vargas is the one trying to force it as Khan comes back with a right hand. The accuracy still with Khan and the hand speed retaining. Well, Vargas pretty much there to be hit. He's in front of him, backing, backing up Amir Khan. And when Amir Khan throws, you know, he lands, he's got quite a bit of reach on Vargas, so when he puts his punches together, they do land, but Khan, you know, he's on his back foot, not really having any detrimental effect on Vargas here in these championship rounds, and Vargas quite happy to just march forward. You feel that if Khan injected some pace, he may be able to have some kind of talent effect on Vargas, but maybe, maybe Khan's not got that in him now, these championship rounds. At this stage of his career, I know he's only 31, but it's the miles on the clock, not the age. 
Yep, hard, so. yep, hard fights. Now, Vargas has had tough defeats to come back from, but not as many grueling affairs, maybe. Bloodied to that nose, tired, but ever so competitive. He hasn't quite got the class at times, has he, Vargas? No, it's quite limited, especially now in the late stage of the fight when you start to tire and hold your feet and start to run out of ideas. And to land that overhand right, you have to be sharp on the counter but to see the shots coming and try and catch your opponent on the way in. And Khan's got height and reach and, and speed on Vargas, so it's going to be very difficult for him. No, Joe Goosen uh, up the talk in between the last rounds. This time it was Chris Johnson's turn. Don't just throw one punch, get combinations off. Amir Khan into round 10. You've got to ask the question as he uh, puts another explosive burst together. How convincing, though, is this performance from AK tonight? Well, it's a decent performance against, against, let's be fair, an average opponent at this level. I mean, in this division, there's some quality operators. So, you know, he's doing okay, but for me, he's not sending out a message to the top boys. The top boys will not be concerned when they're watching Amir Khan this evening. Yeah, that big list of welterweights. The Spences, the Thurmans, the Garcias. As Vargas tries to get another of these right hands going, this is big hooks and huge pressure, and Khan just has to hold there in his own corner. Terry O'Connor just breaks them up, but he looks down at Joe Goosen, and physically, is he beginning to feel it here, Khan? Well, Khan sits him back there looking for a little rest, and Vargas thinking to himself, I'm not going to let you rest. Let's not forget Vargas has got a wealth of experience in there, 34 fights. He's been in with some of the best. Well, he's been in with the best. And still he comes forward and still he throws punches. A real belief tonight to Sammy Vargas's work. I don't know what the odds on a victory for him beforehand were, but they must have been massive because everybody was picking Khan and everybody was seeming to pick Khan within six rounds. Well, Khan not doing a great deal now here. And um, like I said, uh, these are the championship rounds where you can really send a message to the other competitors in the division. And Vargas just walking forward at will for all his limitations that he's got. He's still giving Amir Khan a real fair workout here this evening. And he was clever there too, Vargas, trying to work the body and does again to slow those legs of Khan, which are always so important to his boxing style. He's still got good movement, Amir, here. He's still got a bit of spring in his legs. He has slowed down, but you do, as the fight goes, goes into these late rounds. But Vargas manoeuvring him around and going to try and get him to sit there as long as he can. Made to miss there, but maybe the old Khan of four or five years ago would have punished him. Well, there you go. I mean, making somebody miss and then making them pay is what you've got to do in that pro ring. Amir Khan getting out of the way, getting in a safe zone, then looking for a breather. Yeah, I'm looking for a fair few breathers in these penultimate rounds and Vargas stalking Khan and breathers we talk about he won't be getting them at top level but this is a great fight for him in terms of rounds in the bank caught there looking on steady on the legs yeah and then he bangs his chin as if to say I'm fine no he doesn't know where he is he's not fine another scary moment for team Khan it was a great round until you, you kept your hands down. You gotta keep your hands up when you're moving around the ring, okay? You'd rather move into them than away from them. Well, there's the right hook landing flush as Khan pulls out of his head in the air. And there's the dance you talked about earlier, Adam. There's the legs, they they do that funny dance and Well that's the excitement. That was a decent shot, but Amir Khan just backing up. You can see here his legs are totally gone. Another shot. He's been quite fortunate, really, the way he's been clipped right at the end of the rounds. And when you throw your punches, they got to be hard and soft, okay? Believe me, if you back them up a little bit, when you get the opportunity and you back them up, you're going to be happy. Well, everybody at ringside seems to have Amir Khan in a, in a really healthy lead here. But that does not tell the story at all.
Samuel Vargas has floored him heavily in the second round. He's picked himself up off the canvas a couple of times and he's given him a real tough, grueling affair. And, you know, the, the concentration in the last three or four rounds for Khan has really been back foot, try to fend him off. Gets a right hand in there, but he has had to take punishment late on. Can Vargas dish out any more? Well, Vargas is very tired, but still coming forward, so... Even if he does land, there's not much power on the shots. Khan sprints it into the ring, now it's Vargas who's rushing Amir Khan. Desperately trying to land something, running out of time into the 11th round, but he will still believe. Well, Khan was really moving quickly there out of range, almost jumping out of range, and Vargas was just trying to make the ground up and looking a bit clumsy as he did that. But um, Khan really, when he makes them, when he makes them gaps, he should be pushing forward and letting combination go and, and go and make make Vargas pay for missing. And Khan doesn't seem to have that energy at this stage of the fight, which which you need to then answer back, especially at top level if he's to step up. I mean, we've seen what Garcia did to Vargas, we've seen what Errol Spencer did to him, and you know that was before this stage of the fight. And Vargas has faded quite badly here; he's looking quite badly damaged and drawn and and tired, but. Khan's the same, he's fading, he's, he's looking tired himself. Yes, he's got that sharp jab, but he's able to just box and manoeuvre as he pleases with Vargas. Against a world-level opponent, you wouldn't get away with this kind of performance late on. Yeah, he's just trying to see it out, isn't he, Khan, now on points you, you feel. But I was just going to ask you that about the, uh, the next-level opponent as he's hit by another right hand. What would have happened, and I know it's difficult because he needed the rounds here, Carl, what would have happened if Kell Brook had been in the ring with him tonight? Well, Kell Brook, at his best, you've seen him, he can, he can land accurate blows. I've spotted him, he's, very, he's a quality operator, full of talent, and he'd look to get Khan out of there, and he's got that strength to do it. Would Brook have knocked out Khan on this performance? A good Kell Brook, yes. Manny Pacquiao, the other one they're talking about, rather faded these days, but of course a modern legend, a great. But uh, I wonder what they're going to be thinking after this one. If it stays like this, he'll surely get the wide points victory. But Vargas will he'll go all out in the final round. He hasn't been subdued, has he? He's not, no. I mean, Amir Khan's box well, let's not... Let's not give him too much stick, but don't forget, we are judging him, and, and rightly so, on world level, because that's where he wants to be, that's where he's told he wants to be. He's boxed fine in patches, and there's been times where he could have taken him out. But um, physically, he hasn't been able to push that pedal full down and uh, get the stoppage win. Joe Goosen. Judges at ringside, Steve Gray, John Latham, Marcus McDonnell will no doubt have Khan in a very, very handy lead. He's won pretty much everything in terms of rounds, but the effort and commitment of Sammy Vargas has been spot on and has it exposed some weaknesses in Khan as he goes for the grandstand finish. I've got a feeling if Amir Khan does have anything left in the tank, he'll expend it all in this round because he does want to finish strong. He does want to put that grandstand finish on and send a statement out to the division. Well, that's it. After uh, a medium night, he has uh, won the rounds and he needed rounds. So, as you're right, you can't criticise it too much, but it's what the others at the top level are thinking. Well, for the last third of the fight, rounds 9, 10, 11, and this round, he's looked quite flat and tired. And let's not forget, he hit the deck quite early on, which was bad. I mean, it, that doesn't look good against the level of opposition. No disrespect to Vargas, but when he steps into world level, he's been totally outclassed, let's be honest. So, you know, in terms of sending a message out there to the others, the other top fighters in the division, that's certainly not been the case for Khan, but it's another good comeback fight for him. Yep, every fight's different. 
if you compare it to what Garcia and Spence did to Vargas, of course it's not going to look good. And the second round knockdown, but he's getting the job done. Vargas, if he hears the final bell, it will be a real moral victory. He'll go back to Canada with his head held high, still bobbing and weaving. It's been a great effort, I think. A real gritty performance this from Vargas. Great effort, fantastic. I mean, he's, he's kept believing in himself. He's badly damaged. His nose clearly broken there, bleeding heavily from the nose, which has affected his breathing. That blood will be going down the back of his throat, blocking the airways. So, you know, for him to be here in round 12, still pushing calm back, having a real go. Referee getting in the way there, I mean. The focus, of course, though, will be on Amir Khan. The good, the bad, the ugly, what the conclusions are drawn from this. What are yours, Carl? Marks out of 10, what grade do you give him? That sort of thing. Well, early on, he looked sharp, he looked effective. Then he got clipped and went over. Bad sign to go over for somebody like Vargas, who's not a puncher. Put him over, he looked hurt. He's been saved by the bell twice, really, Amir Khan, in this fight. There's two bad flaws. And then in this last third of the fight, the last four rounds, the championship rounds, not done a great deal against a very tired, a very damaged-looking Vargas. So, you know, in terms of a performance that's going to step him onto world level, it's pointless judging it, Adam, to be honest. I don't want to be too harsh, but you've got to be realistic. A Keith Thurman, a, a Garcia, a Porter even. I mean... Well, the crowd are up. They are Amir Khan fans, and they are celebrating. And it is 12 rounds in the bank, and it is a convincing points win. Was it a performance to rock the welterweight world? Well, on that card, the 120, 109, and the fact he came up off the floor, there were many good things that Team Khan can take from it. But there will be many critics out there looking at it in a different way. Well, you know, we're, we're forced to look at it as a world level. Amir Khan's being up at world level and he wants to get back there. Is that the kind of performance that's going to convince you that Amir Khan can now be world champion at 147 pounds? Well, here's another way of looking at it. Should we expect or have expected too much after the knockout loss to Canelo, all that time out, only the 39 seconds against the Greco? You know, he needed an experience tonight. He certainly got that. Well, this, you know, that adds up to the fact that the question begs, can he get back to where he needs to be after them kind of defeats? You know, when you step up and fight somebody like Canelo Alvarez and get ironed out in the manner in which he did, can you recover from that completely? Well, he's done well to get two wins in his comeback, and he will be looking for the super fight. It will be fascinating to hear from him afterwards, and also if Kel Brook is involved. Well done, too, to Samuel Vargas. Let's get the official verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of world-class international boxing, we go to the scorecards. Marcus McDonald, 119-108. Stephen Gray, 119-109. John Latham, 118-110. All three scorecards go to the winner by unanimous decision. The fighting pride of Bolton, England, Amir. King 33rd victory for Amir Khan, wide, unanimous, celebrating, he's absolutely delighted. Kelbrook, the wry smile, what is he thinking, what is he going to say? What sort of a message has that sent out around the world? Plenty to like at times, dramatic in Patches Carl as he always is. He's must see boxing television. Again, I'll ask you, 